Hi everyone. This is Victoria Wilders, your My Kids Locker COVID-19 ad podcast host. Today, we get to read a story called The Two Princesses and the Two Feathers. I hope that you enjoy this new empathy tale and take some time to try to do the extension lesson as well. Okay, we are going to start with a mindful moment and listen in part one. To part one, are you comfy? Are you cozy? Well, get ready to listen. Well, here we are in part one. In part one, we get to do some listening today. So, as we think about this week and the fact that we have Earth Day on Wednesday, perhaps you might want to think about what it means to live in our world. Our statement today of mindfulness is choose to believe in new beginnings. As we are in the springtime right now, many of us will see flowers bursting with color and growth. We all need new beginnings. We all need hope because new beginnings bring hope and they bring hope for the future. So I hope you take some time today to be able to think about some new beginnings. Choose to believe in new beginnings. With that, we are now moving on to part two, create. Hi everyone, welcome back to part two today. We are going to create something amazing and let's get craft, 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 bye. Here we are, part two we get an opportunity to create. And here at My Kids Locker, in this part, we focus on four different aspects. Tail, T for tell, A for art, L for layout, and E for express. Well, today, we get to focus on telling. We get to focus on telling today. So, as this, is, as this week is Earth Week, maybe perhaps take some time to reflect on our environment. But also, when you're listening to the story, this story is going to be a focus on the two princesses and the two feathers. Right of reflection with the page divided into two sides. So you might want to draw a line all the way down your page so that there's two sides to it. One side can be dedicated to one princess and the other side is going to be dedicated to the other princess. I want you to write some words and draw some pictures of what these princesses look like. Think about the problems each princess faces. For those older students, take some time to write a paragraph, a descriptive paragraph about each of these princesses. So you're going to think about what this princess is like and think about what would be the best way to be able to describe these characters and you will need line piece of paper. So it's best to write some notes down while you're listening to the story and then write a paragraph for each princess. And that's for the older kids. Okay. So we now get to move on to our lovely tale called the princess and the two feathers. But just before we do, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the background. There are two beautiful princesses living in different villages in the Oak and Eagle Kingdom. They meet and find two magical peacock feathers. One princess struggles to understand the purpose of her feather. The other princess learns how her feather brings hope to her people. Can both princesses learn the goodness of their feathers? Well, I guess we will find out. So, I hope that you enjoy today's story, and without further ado, here is The Two Princesses and the two feathers. Once upon a time, a long time ago, in the Oak and Eagle Kingdom, there lived two princesses. Both had been appointed to run their own villages because their fathers were away much of the time. One lived in a castle that was absolutely gorgeous. It was beautiful. It overlooked the sparkling, shining sea. And... There were green meadows that sparkled like emeralds all around. Flowers of many different colors bloomed throughout the year. The village was called the Shining Emerald Village in the land of the Southern Eagles. The princess 
oversaw the shining emerald village, and she enjoyed being there, but there were some problems in her village. Although the first princess was elegant, she was poised. She was also well-dressed and could speak extremely well. Many villagers of the Shining Emerald had a view of what perfect was, and it was their princess, in their eyes. Some would say, what does perfect mean? And they would often say, it is our princess that is perfect. The king of the lands also thought that this princess was perfect. He delighted in his daughter, and he loved her truly. However, in this village, there were people who chose to be mean. She didn't have enough servants, and the people could not help her with the mean people. They would often destroy things in the village, like tables and windows. She didn't have enough guards. She didn't meet with others to find support because the king of the land of the southern eagles said she had to be seen as someone who wasn't weak. So she would often not leave her castle. She became proud. The villagers of the shining emerald village could get angry and they could use their anger to hurt people as well. Because there were not enough guards, the victims couldn't really do anything. There were people that were unhappy in the village and the princess became unhappy as well. Soon, she was called the Grey Princess. She was called the Grey Princess because she was sad. Although she was still elegant and she spoke with confidence, there was a deep sadness in her heart. Although people would say, wow, what a beautiful princess, everyone knew that she was a shade of gray in her heart because she was sad. She knew that she could live a better life and her villagers could live a better life too. There was another village on the other side of the Shining Sea in the Oak and Eagle Kingdom. It wasn't so pretty. It was a small village with a small castle. There was a princess in that castle and she was truly joyful. There wasn't that many people there. They didn't have a beautiful castle or a gorgeous village like the Shining Emerald Village. But there was something about the village that made the people sparkle with true joy. This poor princess was called the Bright Blue Princess because of the joy she had. There was something really special about this village because elders cared for her and they would meet with her. They would have town meetings and they would care for each other in so many ways. They would eat together and they would hunt together because they were a very poor village. They would celebrate what they had as well. Years and years ago, there was a story of how this very small village was hurt by the misunderstood water troll king. The water troll king had come and he had convinced some of the people to leave so they would help him in the water troll tunnels. This village used to be quite big, yet it became even smaller because people left for the riches and the jewels of the water troll tunnels. The bright blue princess 
Even though she didn't have much, she was like the color of a beautiful bright blue sky. She became known as the bright blue princess. One day, when the bright blue princess was walking along the shining sea, she happened to meet the gray princess, and they looked at each other. They had heard of each other, but they never met each other before. They started talking, and the bright blue princess was saying, Yes, I absolutely love my village. My elders take care of me. We eat together. Our children are happy here, and we have wonderful visions of how we're going to build our village. The gray princess looked at her sadly. I am so sad. I have a very big village, and I need more help. My heart aches because I don't have the skills or the trained people to help this village. I feel like I'm kind of stuck here. I'm stuck in the situation. Well, the bright blue princess gave the gray princess a hug. You know what? I think we can learn a lot from each other. And I think we should meet on the banks of the shining sea every single day so that we will be able to help each other. The bright blue princess said, We've heard so many good things about your village. Your village is magnificent, and people from all over the Oak and Eagle Kingdom come and visit you. There is hope. I know there is. Well, they laughed and embraced each other. They returned the next day. Yet, to their surprise, in the exact place where they met, they found two magical peacock feathers lying on the sandy beach. They said, wow, this is really interesting because the peacock feathers have a beautiful blue in their eye and they have a little bit of gray on the outside. They have some other colors in there too. The two princesses were amazed. They both picked up the peacock feathers and looked into the eye of the peacock feather to be silly. But they saw something they never expected. The bright blue princess saw the gray princess through the peacock eye. It was like looking through a window into her heart. She saw almost like a water falling on her. The only way she could describe it was a waterfall of sadness. As soon as the gray princess held up her peacock feather to her eye, she saw the bright blue princess shining and shimmering like sunlight on a lake. These magical feathers were amazing because they could see into the hearts of people. The gray princess wondered, I wonder where these peacock feathers came from. The bright blue princess and the gray princess agreed that they could help other people with these two magical feathers. They decided they would go back to their villages and start to use the peacock feathers. The bright blue princess said, You know, I think we can help each other if we see each other as we truly are. They were starting to go back, and then the gray princess met her father on the road, and her father, known as Greyheart, asked, if he could see what was in his daughter's hand. She held it up and he looked at her through the peacock feather. He said, Did you know that you look like pure sadness? You look like water all over you and it looks like you know you're not good enough. Did you realize that if you go back to the village... 
that they're all going to think that you're not a good princess and you're not good enough. Well, at that very moment, the gray princess felt shame. Her shame was the feeling you get when you feel you are a bad person, when really it's what makes you special. She thought, well, what are other people going to say about me? We have a big village, and if my father sees I am weak as a waterfall, then others are going to see this too. The father turned to her. We are going to break this. You do not need this feather anymore. The king pulled the strands of the feather and snapped it until there was no peacock eye left. The gray princess and the gray heart king walked slowly back to their village. The gray princess felt judged and shameful. This led her to feel angry. She went into her shining emerald castle and she cried. Meanwhile, the bright, bright blue princess ran into her village and showed the elders. She said, look at this. I can really see your heart. I can see your joy. She went up to one of the elders and she saw these beautiful streams of light and flowers that were blossoming into full bloom. They were so glorious. The bright blue princess went over to a young child and held up the peacock eye. There she saw bluebirds flying around the child. You have our beautiful blue birds all around you. The girl said, yes, I love our magical bluebird that flies in our Oak and Eagle kingdom. The princess replied, go raise and care for our rare bluebirds, but be aware that you may become tired because of your time they may expect from you. Balance your time with the bluebirds with your family. This is your gifting. The young girl agreed and she said, I'm going to start on that right away and I'm going to look after them, especially the injured bluebirds. So the young girl went away and the bright blue princess went up to her mother and father. Look what I found. This is amazing. She showed the feather to both of them. She held it up to both of them. The mother had red roses around her hair, yet they had thorns. The father had two golden eagles beside him, yet they had sharp talons. The images are just so beautiful, yet their power can affect others by the thorns of impatience, mother, and father, the talons of judgment. She said, this is so powerful. The feather's eye is so powerful because you can see your greatest strength, yet also your greatest weakness. The next day, she came down to the bank and the gray princess was there. The bright blue princess was full of joy. This brought me so much joy by looking through the peacock eye. It was amazing, she said. Where's yours? The gray princess, with her head hung low, said, my father took it. He said that it would bring too much shame because people would think I'm sad, so I don't have it anymore. The blue princess replied, Do you know what I've seen? I've seen the beautiful bluebirds dancing around the young girl's head. I've seen a bouquet of flowers around an elder. I've seen a bouquet of red roses around my mother. And I've seen magnificent golden eagles around my father. 
These are the gifts they have been given, but each are their greatest strengths as well as their greatest weaknesses. The Grey Princess said, I don't understand. How can your greatest strength be your greatest weakness? The Bright Blue Princess said, Your sadness can help other people because you can empathize with others. You can have a shared experience. The bright blue princess handed over her precious magical peacock feather. You take this and you use this. Use it to teach your villagers and your parents how important and special they are. The bright blue princess walked away with nothing. The gray princess went into her shining emerald village. She started using the peacock feather. She saw a man begging on the streets and she went up to him and she held it to his eye. In an instant, she saw an amazing sight. All of these white doves were flying around him. There was beautiful music from the man's voice. You sing, and the sound is like ruffling a beautiful dove, she said. I know I sing, and I love my peaceful voice, yet many people make fun of my voice, said the man. She looked at him. You need to go sing as much as you can, because you will heal people's worries when they hear your soothing voice. She kept on walking along the cobblestone straight. She saw a man who had an injured leg. He looked like he was in pain. All of a sudden, she put a peacock feather eye to her eye. She saw him walking and jumping in happiness. But not only that, she saw him caring for people and helping people with disabilities as well. She was thinking that this is amazing. He was a giver, even though he lost his ability to walk. You need to go. You need to go to our village and you need to serve them. You need to teach them about how you've overcome your loss, said the gray princess to the man. That's where my heart is. That's what I need to do, he responded. So she went along the road and he went the other direction. As she was walking along, she saw her father in the distance. The gray heart. She held up the peacock feather and she looked through. She saw her father being truly gifted with a golden cloak. However, it was a heavy golden cloak that weighed him down. She ran up to her father. Father, I see you being a leader. I see you being someone who cares. And I see someone. I see you as being someone who will help our kingdom grow. Yet your struggle is how important it is for people to judge you as a perfect king. Dear father, your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. Father, Let the judgments roll off your shoulders. You cannot be perfect. Believe in yourself. You are a king that loves people. Be proud of who you are despite criticism. I've wanted to hear those words for so long, said her father. I too have walked in shame and have been told by my father that I'm not good enough. Daughter, thank you so much for looking through the peacock feather, and I know your eyes have seen my true, tender, and sensitive heart. The father said, Daughter, will you forgive me for shaming you? The gray princess said, Yes, I do. He looked at her and held her hand. Together with the small emerald village, we will learn the ways of empathy, strengths, and gifts. We are going to go around and tell other people about their gifts and how what their strengths are and how they can be used. 
They both hugged each other. They knew that the magical feather would be very powerful because they'd bring joy and they would recognize that all of them have strengths and weaknesses. For your greatest strength is also your greatest weakness. And your greatest weakness is also your greatest strength. The end. Hi, everyone. It's time to innovate. Part three. Well, I hope that you enjoyed our lovely story, The Two Princesses and the Two Feathers. It was my pleasure to be able to share with you another Oak and Eagle story. This is a tale and a lesson, or should I say a story and a lesson. And now we are on part three, the innovate and extension piece. So today I want you to learn about princesses in the real world. Take some time to talk to your parent or maybe an adult around you, maybe even your teacher, (laughs) um, and research those princesses who have contributed positively to the world and learn about what good they have done serving others and given mo- giving money. There, is, there was a princess named Princess Diana from England. She would be a lovely person to start with. Learn about her. Learn about her background. Learn about what she did for the world to make, the, make it a better place. Maybe even learn about quotes she said. So, maybe... There are other, there are any, sorry, (laughs) maybe there are problems that these princesses had to overcome in order to care for others. Perhaps you might do, might do more of an in-depth research to find out. As we know, Princess Diana struggled with depression, but she had to overcome her depression to be able to help others. So this challenge today is focused on princesses and learning about how they have contributed positively to the world. I hope that you've enjoyed our tale called The Two Princesses and the Two Feathers. I hope today you will take some time to be able to celebrate our environment. We have Earth Day coming up on Wednesday, April 22nd. And that's a very special day. So take some time to think about our earth and think about how we can help our earth get better. Okay, until next time, I hope that we have less screens, more listening, more creating, and more innovating. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'll see you in the next episode.